What's good, YouTube? It's Justice. I used to be Pay, and today I am back with another video. And I think I'm gonna go with that as my intro for the future, but whatever. Today I'm gonna be talking about AI and its potential in music and how I think it'll impact the music industry, but how I think it'll impact posthumous music the biggest and, and most impactful way. I guess that was, that was a really weird way to put it, but yeah, I think it'll have its biggest impact on posthumous music. But before I get into the video, if you're watching my content, you gotta subscribe. It's just the rule around here. You know, it's just basic, basic handshake agreement. It's kind of like getting a sample from Costco. You're supposed to take one. So just subscribe. Just subscribe. Don't be that guy. But if you're going to be that guy, I will have to give out a punishment. And let me think, what, 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 what would be a good punishment? All right. The punishment is you will have to listen to Lil Pump's entire discography after 2019 forwards and backwards three times so you don't get any of the good stuff all the stuff from after 2019 you have to let's do it forwards and backwards hey, so that's your punishment if you don't subscribe but let's get straight into the video so recently a lot of ai stuff has been trending online ai is like the new big thing and it's not really new but in terms of like public usage and everyone having access to it it's pretty new right um people have been making like fake podcasts with joe rogan they've been making like celebrities say stuff you've seen like the president videos um and now people have started making songs and making celebrities sing other celebrity songs and stuff like that hey there delilah what's it like in new york city i'm a thousand miles away because tonight you look so pretty yes you do and recently people have been creating their own songs with artists so like the biggest one as of right now is probably the drake and the weekend song that's been going super viral and i believe it's umg is just taking it down on every site they're copywriting every single time and i'm not really sure how the legal stuff works in terms of like being able to copyright somebody's voice but i'm sure they probably have that somewhere in, in writing because of course they would um but yeah so it's been going crazy and it seems like it might low-key be the future of music because people can do it so easily. I've seen so many videos of people making AI songs for countless different artists. It doesn't seem to be super, you know, I don't want to say it doesn't seem to be super difficult because I'm sure it is, but it doesn't seem to be super outrageous for the average person to be able to find this technology and use it. And a lot of people have been talking about what it means for the music industry and, you know, how artists will, you know, be kind of converted to AI or replaced by AI at times. And I don't think AI will completely um, replace the music industry. I just don't see that happening just because people fall in love with musicians, mostly because of their music, but also because of their personality as well. And without that personality, it takes away a lot of the, 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 um, the mystique of an artist. So I don't think it'll be like, oh my God, in 20 years, we're just going to be listening to robots make music. I doubt that. But uh, Anthony Fontano talked about it as well. He talked about some of the uh, the implications of AI music and how labels will use it once they get it because that's the big thing. When the labels find out how to use it and monetize AI music, they're going to go fucking crazy. I don't know why I just cursed. I'm sorry. I'm going to bleep that out because I don't want to get demonetized. But they're going to go crazy because once the labels, the labels hate it as of now. They hate AI music. They're taking all the AI stuff down. But once they can figure out how to use it on their own, they're going to go crazy. I promise you they will. And I don't think it'll be necessarily with artists that are living and breathing more so. I think it'll be more of a posthumous thing. Because obviously, if an artist is living and breathing, you can make them make music to a certain extent. If they sign a contract with you and you need them to make music, you can kind of make them do that for the most part. Um, unless you're Frank Ocean's label. If you're Frank Ocean's label, you might need to just start using AI Frank Ocean at this point. But for the most part, you can kind of control what an artist does in terms of like their output of their music but when somebody passes away obviously that goes away because that person's no longer here and you're just left over with whatever they had left over whatever recordings whatever songs that they either didn't put out or didn't finish or you know maybe they worked on a little bit but never really put too much thought into it that's all you're left with right and there's been a lot of discussion about the morality of even putting out posthumous music like should you go further than one album how many posthumous albums is the right amount what you know, what is exploiting versus what is just, you know, like uh, honoring somebody's memory. Like there's just a whole bunch of discussion surrounding posthumous music, especially with a lot of the uh, younger artists nowadays dying very young. XXXTentacion, Juice World, Lil Peep, 
Pop Smoke. Like, there's just a whole bunch of artists that have passed away really young. So it's a very, uh, Mac, Mac Miller, it's a very uh, relevant conversation that people are having in rap nowadays. And I think that this AI thing is going to make it even crazier. Because there's no doubt in my mind that um, having an AI is a lot easier to control than an actual artist. So you can tell that AI when to make music. You can have the music done in a certain time. It doesn't gonna, it's not going to take as long if you use an AI. It's probably a little bit cheaper than having a person. You probably don't really you – you don't have to pay for studio time. There's a lot of advantages to using a computer versus using a real person, which is why AI is like a scary thing for not just mu the music industry but society in general. So there's a lot of advantages to that, and those advantages increase even more if that person's not here because they have no say anymore. Now it's just all AI. And I think that that may be a thing that people go to in the future. It's happened before. You know, we've even had AI concerts with the, the virtual reality thing of like Tupac. Um, but it's like, what is the morality surrounding that? And I think that's going to be a really big question going into the next five to 10 years of music. What is the morality behind using AI to put out music from a deceased artist? Because I think, I don't think they're just going to dive headfirst into it and drop an entire AI Juice World album. I don't see that happening. But I think something could happen like, oh, well, you know, uh, X was working on this song and, you know, maybe he put down a verse, maybe he put down one hook and never really thought about it or never really put too much energy or effort into the song that we have. But, you know, people like it. They've heard a snippet of it online. Let's finish the rest of the song with AI and see how people like it. And we'll come out and say, hey, this is the first ever AI. And, you know, we're going to honor Juice World or we're going to honor XXXTentacion's um, memory with this AI song. And we're going to try to finish what he started. I think it could start off like something like that and then kind of snowball a little bit further into, you know, other ideas where it goes from, OK, now we're finishing songs that were already started to be working or started. We're finishing songs that were already like started to now we're starting songs that were never started. So now it's like, okay, well, you know, we found Juice World's uh, book. Let's say Juice World has a book where he's been writing rhymes. I don't know. I'm using Juice World as an example just because he's a large artist that passed away. Let's say Juice World has a book of raps, right? And he has a song titled Gasoline. I don't know. And he's wrote at least a verse and a hook and maybe even thought about putting a certain art artist on the feature maybe he thought about putting polo g in a feature and then he has a space for a second verse and he hasn't finished that right well now what if we what if what if the label picks that up and says okay well juice world started on this and man he probably really liked this idea and i'm sure the fans would love it let's put this out let's finish this song for juice world technically he never got to start it but it is still his idea because at the end of the day that's what people want they want to stay still close to that artist even when they're gone so they're going to say okay well you know Juice World never really recorded this, but it is his lyrics. It is his, you know, his his at least foundation of an idea, and it's his raps. So an AI voice doing it isn't really that bad. It's not, you know, taking something that wasn't originally Juice World's and making it something that it isn't. And then maybe we go a little bit further. Maybe we just go, let's just drop a totally AI song, you know. People love Juice World. We can make something that you know is somewhat Juice World adjacent, isn't too crazy, isn't too far from his typical sound. Uh, sound. Let's just make an AI song, and I think I think that is a point that we could possibly get to in the future because these labels are going to be using this AI. They're going to, and posthumous music is the the number one market I could see AI music being profitable, being useful because again these artists are gone, but people still love their music. People still drop everything and drop what they're doing to go listen to a new Juice World song or a new XXX Tentacion song. Even if they say they don't want any new music, they still go do it. They still go check it out. So it's not like there's no audience for it. And of course, there's going to be huge pushback because that's weird. <laughs> like as, 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 you know, basic as it is to put it, as to put it, um, it's weird. It is weird. You know, the idea of a computer, um, mimicking somebody's voice and creating that music for them when art like music is typically something that's very personal and very unique to an artist and it's typically very meaningful to have a computer just kind of look at the patterns in that person's music and then just kind of copy it and put it out like that's weird it's it's a it's a weird concept but it's going to be a, it's going to be something that people are going to be tuning into for one because of how new and how weird it is but for two because they like those artists and they want new music from them you know there's going to be a lot of debate like, oh, well, we don't want this. This isn't Juice World's vision. This isn't XXXTentacion's vision. And that's going to have 
probably a majority of people. I would say like 70% of people are going to feel that way and they're going to be uncomfortable um, around the AI topic. They're not going to like it a lot. But there's going to be a lot of people who don't care. There's going to be a lot of people who are like, man, I, I know it's not really Juice World's music, but I just miss I just miss hearing that voice, man. I miss I miss hearing that voice and those beats and those cadences. And I just want new music. I don't really care. And I think that's going to be a decent size of the population. And even of that majority, 70 percent or however big of a percentage it'll be, even of that percentage of people who don't like the idea of AI and they're against it and they think it's wrong, a lot of them are still going to listen to it just to hear what it sounds like, just to see if it really sounds like a Juice World song. So I could see labels taking this AI stuff and going really, really far with it. And I honestly think it'll start with smaller artists, um, smaller artists that passed away. I don't think they're just going to jump head first into Juice World, making a, an entire Juice World AI album. But, you know, that could happen. But I don't think they'll just go that far. I think they'll start with smaller artists who passed away and being like, okay, let's make an AI song because the family, the family might be okay with it because, you know, that artist probably didn't leave them too much money and, you know, they don't, they don't really want to support them or not. They don't want to, but they can't really support themselves the same way they were when that artist was alive. So the family's a little bit more behind the idea of an AI song and, you know, it, it, it'll maybe feed their kids or, you know, feed their family. So I think it'll start with smaller artists like that. Um, like for example, that one guy from the D, uh, um, from the DMV, I can't think of his name. Hold on. Let me, let me, let me Google it real quick. Okay, I found it. It was the it, it was the rapper named Gunu, right? Like somebody like him. Now I don't know his financial situation. I don't know what he was making before he died, but I doubt he was making millions of dollars like at Juice World, right? So somebody like him who's a smaller artist, but his story got really big when he passed away because he had a funeral in the club. But somebody like that who wasn't really you know making headline news before he passed away, but once he passes away, it becomes big news. Maybe a family who's in that situation would be like, you know, we're okay with it. And I think a label would try it there and then slowly work their way up to Juice World, to a Tentacion, and then honestly probably to a Tupac because we've been getting Tupac albums since 2005. Like we are, well, not since 2005, but you know what I mean. We've been getting a lot of posthumous Tupac albums. Like there was even a rumor that one was coming out this year. And honestly, they've probably already been using AI for Tupac. Let's just be honest. There's no way he has that much music saved in his vault. But um, yeah, I think I think we will eventually build our way up to that. And I think that may be what's lying in the future. I, I really, truly believe that, that eventually posthumous music will be an AI market. It will be a market of AI. And, you know, most of the time, it'll probably just be songs that the artists start mixed with a little AI. I don't think the entire um, genre will just be um, AI posthumous music. But I think for the most part, um, it's going to start off as like a mix of both AI plus the actual recordings. Then, you know, there will be certain songs that are AI. And then somebody's probably going to release an all AI um, posthumous album in the future, but I do think the federal government will step will step in because they are they are scared shitless of AI and and high level tech technology, especially when the common people have it. Um, as we've been seeing with TikTok, they're ready to ban TikTok. So once people start making AI music, they're definitely going to be talking about this in the Senate, in the House of Representatives, all that stuff. The president will probably have to say something about AI music, and I think that. If I had to make a guess, again, this is really far into the future, and I'm maybe reaching, but I think um, once we get to the point where AI music is becoming really popular, um, especially when it comes to deceased artists, I think the federal government will step in and make sure that there's a clear distinction of what is and what isn't AI-made music. Maybe this is already a thing that they've already written. I doubt it, but maybe it is. But I think there'll probably have to be some distinction like, oh, when you drop in a 100% AI song, you have to say, Juice World." in parentheses AI, or you have to say, I don't know who Juice World was signed with. I think I'm not really sure, but just for an example, you'll have to say universal music's juice world. And then the album name, like you can't just say juice world. You can't just say XXX Tentacion. You can't just say Tupac because it's not really them. So I think the federal government will probably end up stepping in down the line. If there is um, a large in influx of AI created music, and I think they'll have to do something like that where they have to distinguish, okay, half the song was made by AI, the other half was, you know, the actual Juice World, and they'll put that in the song title. Or again, you know, Universal Music presents Juice World, or Universal or Sony presents Tupac. It'll be something like that where they can't just say Tupac or Juice World or uh, Mac Miller. They can't just put their name on it like that. So I think I think that'll be a possibility, man. I think a lot of families will be against it, though. I think most of the stuff um, will be shut down by families like, no, we don't want to do that. That's not how we want to remember our son, or that's not how we want to remember our husband or our, you know, our, our father. I think a lot of families are going to step in when it comes to that AI stuff. Um, but I do think it'll be a thing. I do think there will be 
an influx of AI created posthumous music. And I think it'll be a very interesting topic in five to 10 years. I really do. I really think we'll be sitting here in a couple of years talking about, is it right? Is it wrong? What makes it weird? What makes it not weird? What's okay? What's not okay? You know, because at the end of the day, when it comes to posthumous music, there's two things that I really keep in mind. Um, when I talk about the morality of it, there's two things specifically. One, the integrity of the artist and what type of artist they were. And the fact that, is this really coming from this artist? Is this something the artist was at least having an idea of and working on? Or is this just completely made up? Is this just some random scraps of a random audio you guys found thrown together with a feature to make a song? Like, was this something the artist that really came from that artist? That's the main thing. Did it really come from that artist? And then the second thing is, is it helping the family? Because I think that's honestly, that may be more important in my eyes because that's what I would, that's what I would value. If I was that person and I died, if, if, um, I was making millions of dollars before I died and I wanted my family to keep living that lifestyle. I want to keep providing for my family. I can't be here to provide for my kids, but I want to still provide for them. Then I would say, yeah, go ahead and make the posthumous music. Make seven posthumous albums. If it was me, that's, this is just speaking for me personally. I can't speak for every artist or every musician, but that's what I would want. I'd say make a billion posthumous albums. I want my kids to eat forever. So I don't really care. Squeeze every last drop you could get out of me because I'm gone now, so it doesn't matter to me. That would be my thing, and that's also a thing that I that I keep um, in mind when it comes to posthumous music, which is why sometimes I'm like, I understand when families are okay with five albums, four albums, a single every couple months. Like, I understand it. I'm not just completely against it, because in my shoes, if I could, if I blow up on YouTube one day and I have three million subscribers and everyone loves my videos, then I pass away and they can make AI videos of me that people will still watch and it feeds my mom and it feeds my dad, do it. 100% do it. You're seeing this right now. If that's the case, I hope I don't die soon, but if that's the case, do it. 100%. So that's why I can understand it a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think it's going to be a really interesting topic in five to 10 years because I think AI is not going to take over the entire music industry because people still want that connection with an actual human being. I'm sure there'll be some AI artists that blow up, but I think it's really going to take over that posthumous that posthumous genre because of how young artists are dying and how much those fans still miss those artists and still want that music. So I think that's the future of AI. I think it's going to be dominant in the posthumous field, but Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm an idiot. Maybe I'm just talking just to talk and I don't know what I'm talking about. But if you like this video, if you made it this far, I'd appreciate it greatly if you left a like, if you left a subscribe. It helped me out a ton. And you wouldn't have to listen to, uh, to Lil Pump's discography after the year 2019. So you, it would save you some time and save you like about a thousand brain cells. So thank you so much. I hope you have a great day. Be safe. Be blessed. All that. Peace.